short talk, now even shorter, uh, I'm going to just make three points. First, that the, the, power, the ability to see the future as multiple possibilities. This is, this is one of the basic and important uh, powers of the human mind and maybe specific to the human mind. It may be uh, something in our evolution uh, that produced this capability that uh, is lacking in other creatures. Uh, second point, uh, a determinism, the view that the possible and the actual in the long run are exactly the same and nothing else was ever possible. This is profoundly unhelpful as a basis for psychological theories. Uh, we need instead to think of uh, multiple alternative possibilities for almost everything we analyze. Uh, indeed, the, the deterministic approach is, if anything, counterproductive because it blinds us to the important things that we seek to explain. And in the last minute or two, I'm going to say, well, I think it's probably wrong anyway, uh, the determinism. So I, I'm thinking we shouldn't uh, pay it a lot of heed. So uh, the first point, which is my main one, uh, is that uh, this is a crucial and distinctive feature of the human mind, that we can conceptualize the future uh, leading uh, in different directions to multiple possibilities. And so the human agent, uh, unlike uh, the agents of almost all the other animals, uh, can really operate on the basis of moving toward multiple possible futures and, and selecting among them. Now, I got to think of this as the, the reality of mere possibility, that some things are really possible uh, that will not come through. Uh, come true. That's how we operate every day. And so the task of psychology is to uh, explain that basis and, and denying the, the reality of alternative possibilities as, as uh, determinism does, uh, again, does not, uh, does not help us at all. Um, psychology spent most of the time studying the past. It studies the past extensively. It says, goes back to Freudian psychoanalysis and reinforcement history, and, and more recently, endless research on memory. Uh, how people uh, remember the past, much less on how people think about the future. Although uh, about 10 years ago, the brain researchers started to find out that, uh, that the, the brain sites that are used for remembering the past are also used for projecting the future. Uh, and some of the weird features of memory make sense in the idea that we, the, the brain evolved not so much to replay the past, uh, but to envision the future. And our, our, our episodic memory is a byproduct, perhaps, uh, of that. Anyway, when psychologists got around to studying the future, um, well, I suppose they thought the logical first thing to do was to study prediction. Well, let's see what people think is going to happen. Uh, but, uh, uh, and, and we've learned a great deal from there. I don't wish to be uh, critical or disrespective, but I think it's missing some crucial things that really the pragmatic uh, perspective, going back to William James, that thinking is for doing, uh, when we think about the future, we want to predict not so much how things will turn out uh, but what are the choice points uh, and performance demands at which things can go in different directions? And that's where my agency will be needed, and that's where I'll have to uh, prepare for that. So a uh, term we've been using is the, the matrix of maybe or the, the multi-maybe matrix. So you think of the future as, well, there's this possibility and this possibility and this possibility. Uh, each maybe will come true, maybe not. And uh, each of those is associated with another host of maybes if I make this choice. It could lead to other opportunities, but other things could go wrong and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So the prediction model uh, of thinking about the future, which is, is one and is important, uh, but you're trying to predict how things will turn out. Uh, the works best if the future is understood as a single road, that you have a destiny or a fate, uh, that fortune tellers can tell the future uh, and so on. Scientifically, determinism, uh, this was Laplace's uh, idea, too, that if, uh, if infinite knowledge were available, one could calculate the future uh, with complete uh, accuracy based on simply knowing the present. Alternatively, however, the future is multiple alternative possibilities. Some will come true uh, and some will not. So in that latter sense, the purpose of thinking about the future is not to predict how things will turn out, but to predict what do I have to prepare for, uh, where will I have to make choices, uh, that uh, can go one way or another, where will I have to uh, perform well, where I can succeed uh, or fail. Uh, so the human agent and its, its processes are, are heavily based on this reality of mere uh, possibility, extending the term agency even uh, to, uh, to free will for, for people who believe in that. Uh, 
the agent does not need to know so much how things are going to turn out in the end, so as uh, uh, the economist said in the long run, we're all dead anyway, uh, but uh, uh, the agent does need to know when it will be called on to decide or perform. It could come to a path in the road, and you'll have to make a decision whether to go left or right. Uh, so having thought about this in advance and having some plans and some ideas enables you uh, to cope uh, with this point. And the human mind can prepare itself uh, in advance for things being able to go in different directions. Now, I said uh, this is perhaps something specific uh, to humans. And uh, uh, this interesting experiment by Red Sean Sudendorf a couple of years ago um, made that, made that uh, suggestion. And, and since then, there's been some additional evidence uh, in, in their experiment, they compared uh, human children, two to four years old, versus uh, you know, the smartest apes they could find, uh, adult chimpanzees, orangutans, and gorillas. So what they, they started by training uh, everyone. They would drop a treat into a tube, uh, into the top, and it would come out the bottom. And after it came out the bottom, it would fall into a hole and be gone forever, unless you put out your hand and caught it. Well, everybody learned that. Everybody wanted the treat. Everybody learned to, ma uh, to manage it. Then they modified the tube so there are two openings at the bottom. It could come out to the left or to the right. Um, and so then, you're just uh, putting out your hand on one or the other, you're guessing and your probability of success uh, is only 50%. You only get the treat half the time, unless, uh, like this girl, you use both hands. You understand both outcomes are possible and you prepare for both. Okay, uh, straightforward enough. Uh, so she has to understand that there are two alternative possibilities uh, and she can't uh, uh, control it, so she prepares for both. Well, uh, the two-year-old children, human children, they had trouble getting this right. They, they sort of guessed, but by the three years old, they got it uh, pretty fast and the, the four-year-olds got it right away and they got it every trial on the 20 trials. In contrast, none of the apes ever figured it out. Uh, they never, they would just guess, they never realized that both things were possible and they should prepare for both outcomes. And perhaps the most interesting, a couple of them did stumble on the solution once or twice and they put out both hands uh, and caught uh, the treat, but then they went back to guessing with one hand. So even though they stumbled on the solution, they didn't realize that they had it, then they went back uh, to guessing. So uh, the implication is that this ability to think of the future as this matrix of maybe, this is something uh, uniquely human. That the, what, uh, the special processes in evolving the human mind enabled us uh, to project into the future and conceptualize these uh, multiple alternative possibilities, presumably because that was very useful and adaptive for us. Um, our colleagues and I had a review article in Psychology and Consciousness uh, a couple years ago. Uh, where we reviewed uh, a variety of other evidence uh, from uh, social psychology and related fields uh, about, uh, again, uh, thinking of this future as a, a multi-maybe matrix. Uh, again, there's some old findings that people will bet more on something they don't know the answer uh, uh, if it's in the future than in the past. So uh, in one case, it was the outcome of a football game, another, uh, somebody else's child, is it going to be male or female? Uh, this was back before they were... Uh, and whatever genders. Um, but uh, regardless, the odds are the same. You don't know the outcome, whether the game was yesterday or tomorrow, but somehow people are more willing to bet on it. If it's tomorrow, there's more uh, some kind of subjective sense that it's still possible to change. Uh, it's still possible that I can uh, control it in, uh, in some way, although with a, with a game or birth of a child, you, you can't do that. Another line of work uh, based on this, uh, there's a long tradition that emotion uh, people think of as to drive behavior uh, based on the idea that fear makes you run away and survive. Uh, but the evidence for that is remarkably weak, and there are very few other examples. And we reviewed the literature uh, on, uh, on emotion some years ago, and emotion really doesn't have that strong a link uh, to actual behavior in terms of the emotion that you feel now. But anticipated emotion does. If you measure how people think, well, if I do this, I'll be happy. If I do this, I'll feel guilty. If I do this, I'll regret it and be sorry. Uh, that's tremendously uh, potent. And so the exciting implication to me is that the human emotion system uh, is not there to drive behavior. And indeed, when we act based on current feelings, we're often sorry, uh, we do impulsive, regrettable things. Uh, but that the, the human emotion system is much more for 
evaluating these projected futures. And you can think of three or possible three or four possible ways that things could go in the future. And they say, well, I'll be glad if there's this one, and I'll be unhappy if it's this one. So I'll pick the first uh, rather than the second. Um, so uh, again, human mind designed uh, for a uh, matrix of maybe. Uh, people moralize the future much more than the past. Uh, there's a line in a paper by Caruso some years ago uh, saying that, well, if something's immoral yesterday, it's going to be immoral tomorrow. And moral rules don't change uh, that fast. And yet, uh, people act as if they do. They prescribe much stronger uh, moral uh, reactions to something in the future than in the past. And our own follow-up showed that they apply that even to themselves, which you might think would be different because nobody wants to be punished. But no, people call for more severe punishments for immoral things that they themselves might do in the future than for things they might have done in the past. A um, variety of other things, the, uh, the, the voters prefer the more optimistic uh, our leaders. It depends on how they uh, conceptualize the future as to whom they support in, in voting. Uh, the, the findings that people pay more attention to potential than achievement is irrational. I mean, a letter of recommendation that says someone might win an award gets a more favorable reaction than saying, well, the person has won an award. Uh, even though uh, the person might win an award, you know, that's only a chance and that's in the future, whereas having won it is, you should be more valued more highly, but people irrationally uh, put it the other way, again, putting greater emphasis on the future. And then Ariely's research on people want to preserve their options, even if they're not inclined to take that option, you hate to close the door on, on some possibility. These and a variety of others I reviewed in this uh, this paper, but shows again the, the the point I'm trying to make is the orientation of the human mind uh, toward multiple possibilities. All right, that's my first point. Second point: uh, psychological theories need to invoke uh, multiple possibilities. Uh, I've had various colleagues and so on remark that oh, we have to be determinists if we're going to be scientists. We have to uh, believe that uh, everything is inevitable and that's how the universe works. Uh, and I don't really think that's uh, true. I'm speaking of someone, I used to be a determinist and I've kind of gotten over that, but uh, I sort of know both sides of the, the debate and I understand the appeal, the appeal but uh, uh, determinism is not, not really helpful. Um, so uh, again, determinism is the idea that what actually happens is the only thing that could happen in that possibility unless the universe had been different going back to the, to the Big Bang. Now, uh, this, this, this argument, this uh, deterministic uh, position, uh, I want to point out, pushing back against the idea that, oh, scientists all have to believe in determinism. Determinism is, is not proven. It's, it's, in fact, impossible to prove that everything that happens is the only possible thing that could have happened in that situation. It's certainly contrary to everyday experience when we have the feeling there are multiple possibilities, and it doesn't fit our data either, which are relentlessly probabilistic rather than deterministic. Uh, none of these four things prove that determinism is false, but I, it seems illogical to say that scientists have to believe something that's unproven, unprovable, and hard to fit with our data, and so on. Um, so uh, I'm going to argue it's unworkable as a basis for psychological theory. If a, a paper under review uh, that goes through a variety of, of things that psychologists study, and essential to them is the idea that there are multiple possibilities. Um, Here's a list of some of them. A threat. Threat is something that's bad that might happen, but it also might not happen. You know, say uh, it's a threatening situation when you're standing in front of the firing squad and they're uh, pointing their guns at you. Well, that's, that's, that's too late. Uh, the danger came much earlier when you did the things that were going to end up uh, putting you in front of the firing squad. Opportunity on the positive side is something good that might happen, but might not happen. Success and failure, only meaningful if the other one uh, is is possible. Indeed, uh, competition is, is based on uh, multiple possibilities. Any game, uh, games are based on the assumption that uh, one team or the other uh, can win. And this is not just a weird feature. Everything everyone does in the game is based on that assumption uh, that multiple outcomes are, are possible. Choice we study endlessly. Again, it's the assumption that multiple things could happen there. Moral judgment is a judgment should the person have acted differently in that situation, uh, which seems to uh, assume that, uh, that the person could have acted differently in that situation. Uh, I can go on and on. Oh, let me mention a couple of the interpersonal ones. Negotiation, 
again, something that's not found in the animal world. Uh, likewise, compromise, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't get that, but it's very pervasive uh, in human life. And again, it's based on the assumption there are multiple possible outcomes. Uh, I would like one, you would like a, a different one, but we can find something in the middle. It'll be satisfactory uh, to both of us. Uh, it's, you know, the essence of uh, uh, the benefits of economic trade is, is both sides benefit. The, the buyer wants to buy, the seller wants to sell. And so if they can find uh, a price in, in the middle, they, then they are both better off. Uh, so we could go on and on uh, with these, but uh, again, much of what we have to explain and analyze in psychology is based on this multiple uh, possibilities. Um, so situation structure is often defined by what is possible, what can happen in this situation, not by what is guaranteed or what has to happen, uh, but by is there an escape option? Uh, what are the possible implications if I do this or that? Um, I'd point out too, determinism is pretty hard to implement into your, your daily life. Uh, my friend, uh, Professor Jeff Sherman, has this remark, we cannot choose to act as if we have no choice. Uh, and that uh, struck me as a, a profound and, and clear truth too. That's neither here nor there, but uh, again, it makes me think determinists can't really live that way. They don't raise their children that way. Uh, they uh, still act like they believe in moral responsibility and multiple alternatives and things like that. All right, uh, in the last couple of minutes, let me say why I uh, think uh, I've grown uh, skeptical that determinism uh, is even defensible uh, anymore. Uh, you know, Laplace had this thought experiment that if the supermind knew every particle in the state of the universe, uh, the state of every particle in the universe uh, at a particular time, um, and uh, knew all the laws of nature, then it could, with perfect accuracy, calculate uh, the future or the past uh, just from that. But uh, that thought experiment could not be done because, as we got from relativity theory, there's no simultaneous moment uh, for uh, the universe. You can't blame Laplace on that because relativity theory was only invented a, a century after uh, after he was uh, alive. But uh, uh, but the, this thought experiment that's had such an influence on Western civilization, it's, it's not possible to do. And a more complex argument, which I haven't seen anyone else make this point, but it's really, uh, I think, a, an example of, of circular reasoning. So suppose you could get past the problem that there's no single moment of the universe. Suppose you could conceptualize uh, somehow uh, and, and know everything in the universe and, and all the laws of nature. Well, you'd have to know not just some basic principles, but you'd have to know how all the causes interact, when multiple causes converge uh, in any given situation, there are always multiple things going on. When causes converge, which ones take priority over which ones, which ones interact and reverse uh, or, or reduce the effect of others. You'd have to know all of those possibilities. And here's a crucial point, every moment in the universe is unique. So there's a unique combination and, and uh, a disposition of all these causes. So you'd have to know every possible one, including you'd have to know exactly at this moment uh, with this particular configuration of particles and causes, you'd have to know what does this lead to, which cause takes precedence over which other causes and so on. So you'd have to know what comes next. And that makes the deterministic argument circle, uh, circular because, okay, I know what happens next when there's uh, this particular uh, state of the universe. And from that, I infer that we can predict what comes next um, based on the state of the universe. Uh, again, that's, if I know X, uh, then I can predict X. Uh, but uh, again, I said that's circular. Well, anyway, uh, that's uh, the minor part. I think the, the earlier ones I wanted to be important. So uh, to conclude, and uh, the human mind thinks of the future as having multiple possibilities, uh, and it does this to prepare for the future. Psychological theories need uh, the reality of mere possibility. Uh, thank you, and if you have thoughts or suggestions, this is an important topic to me and I'm doing my work, please, uh, there's my email address, please uh, feel free to uh, contact me and uh, send me your thoughts. Thank you.